What up, what up, what up? It's Michelle Eldridge. Welcome to another Facebook Live. You guys, if you're on the replay, it just means that little red dot isn't up there. Please comment the word replay. I would appreciate it. Let me know what day and what time you caught this video. That would be super awesome of you. I greatly appreciate it. And if you are new, say new in the comments below. I want to welcome you. I want to thank you for being here. You're flipping awesome, and we appreciate having you here. So if you're live, say hey. Thank you guys for giving me some of your time. You are awesome. I know this live's a little bit late. That's A-OK. -okay. Um, so I hope lots of you hop on. Let me know as you hop on where you're hopping on from. Uh, the best part about social media that it connects everybody to everybody. I probably wouldn't have a team if I could only, like, talk to people who were in my area. So, um, what's up, Michelle? What's up, Dana, Allie, Chelsea, Yvonne, sweet lady, uh, Whitley. Hello, hello, hello. So, what are you guys doing? I'm sorry. I knew, I knew you did. Um, I'm sorry that the light is not the best right now. So, I broke, broke both of my ring lights um, last night. One back to back. That was interesting. What's up, Lisa Grossman? Listen, if y'all don't, if you have not, you need to go look at Lisa Grossman's profile when this live video is done. And you need to go um, watch her latest video celebrate National Women's Day because it, international rather, um, is amazing. It was so good. And I'm kind of, you're doing your nails? Ooh, good for you. I wish I was in Dallas, Lisa, for realsies. What's up, Bridget? Okay, you guys. So, um, I just got plain Jane nails right now, but I like them. I'm feeling my inner, you know, basic person. Um, so, I wanted to talk, so Lisa said something in her live earlier. It was funny that she hopped on here. And then, um, and then in the book that Rachel Hollis just released, Girl, Stop Apologizing. I'm sure you guys have heard of Girl, Wash Your Face. If you haven't, you're kind of missing out. <laughs> um, but the Girl, Stop Apologizing book, I'm taking like a spin off of both of them and kind of giving it my own. Um, because that's what I like to do. I don't need to be um, an expert in all the topics. I just need to get my spin on it, and y'all get that for me. So, all right. So the the title is basically um, how to do the impossible, and I put impossible um, in the in like quotation because I feel like sometimes we. We let others' opinions dictate what's possible for us, and I really just think that we need to rethink some things. So, um, first of all, if you are, um, Lisa said this, and I thought it was awesome, tell me something that you are proud of that you've done between this day today and last year if you're a woman. I thought that was awesome. She said, pat yourself on the back. And it probably made a lot of women really think. And I'm specifically talking to women um, tonight, just in case you aren't aware. I think it's we're the most, um, what's the word? We're the most susceptible to this kind of thing that I'm going to go into. So, first of all, how many of you have ever had an idea and somebody told me to stop talking with my hands the other day, you guys, and I really don't know how? It's just part of who I am, so forgive me if that bothers you. I just popped in my head squirrel, but whatever. Okay, so let me know. I want to see some raised emoji hands or whatever, but let me know if somebody has ever, you've ever had an idea, ran it by somebody that you loved or whatever, whether you ran it by them or not. Have you ever had an idea that somebody gave you an opinion on and you were just like, you know what? They're probably right. I'm not going to do it, right? Um, I know that that's happened to me a bazillion, bazillion, bazillion times. Um, I don't know how many times that there's something that I said, hey, I'm going to do this. Or, oh my gosh, that's a good idea. Or, I'm going to shoot for X, Y, Z goal or rank or, or this or that. And somebody say, I don't know. Or, do you think other people like that? Or, da, 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 da. And I've kind of just slid back, right? Slid back and been like, okay, I'm not going to do that then. Okay. Especially when it's our husbands, right? 
like if it's your spouse or your wife, we'll, we'll get into some men territory. And it's a great idea, you think, and you tell them, and they're like, eh, nah, I don't know. But I'm here to tell you. So, so in Rachel's book, she said something about um, she had this idea, and her husband thought, you know what, I feel like that sounds familiar to something else, and this not might not be received well, and da 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 And she could have let that crush her, and she almost did like she was thinking about it, and instead she kept on anyway. Um, and she pursued it because in the end, if it comes to you, there's probably a reason. I mean, if it's not harming anybody, not harming you, then there's no reason you shouldn't pursue that. And I know that I've talked about this before, but I want to talk to talk about it again. It's easy to feel guilty for doing anything at all for yourself as a woman, right? It's so easy to... Just try to be pleasing every single person that's around you. It's so easy to worry about every single person but yourself. And and I've been saying it. Lisa said it today. And so today, I'm like, well, how do we do the impossible? I'm going to call you. I'm going to call him, Chelsea. I have to do my video. There's no not doing my video every day. So after the video, I will do it. Okay, okay. So I was like, how do we do the impossible? I was actually I was actually talking to Michael, and I'm like, I've got to do a video when I get home. I'm like, it would be easy for me to not do it, and people be like, see, I knew she wasn't going to do it because now he's around or whatever, and that is what people have said. I bet you won't be able to do a video every day. Like, they're challenging me almost. But they mean, they try to say it in a loving way, but it's almost a backhand smack. Like, I bet you can't do this every day now, or I bet your goals have to be different now. No, they don't. See, that's where I made the mistake before. When he got out last time, I changed everything about me to fit him. I stopped going live. I stopped doing, like, very rarely was I doing it. I stopped working as much. I stopped, I took my head up from down and looked around a while, compared myself. God help that rabbit hole. And, you know, just got in this really weird place of, is it even worth it? Like, am I even going to be able to do it if it makes him so uncomfortable? Am I going to even be able to do it? The difference is, is this Michelle versus that Michelle is completely different people. So this Michelle, it's like, that's not going to happen. There's no way in hell because I'm not going to allow it, right? I've, I've made it crystal clear that there is nothing going to stop me, not slow me down, not anything unless it's to do with my kids and I can't help it. And so what I want you to do is whatever your goal is. So if your goal is to run a marathon, if your goal is to, um, I don't know, lose so many pounds, if your goal is to hit the next rank, if your goal is to sign up however many people before the month is over, if your goal is... What could be another goal? If your goal is to count your carbs and macros and intermittent fat, like anything, whatever goal that you have, set on that. Don't focus on any other bigger goals at all because what happens is you start focusing on these goals and you're focusing on this one, you're focusing on that one, you're trying to do this one, and they're all getting a little piece of you, but none of them's getting done, okay? And then if you fail at one, what happens is you're like, well, I've still got options C and D and E and F. And if you look at things like there is no plan B, there is no plan B. I'm just going to give it to you straight. I can't get a job because of my background. Okay. I can't as long, even though it was seven years ago, it doesn't matter. I can't get a job. Right. So I am officially unemployable and it's almost good news now, but before it was bad news. And so for me, the lifestyle that I am living currently and the lifestyle that I will continue to grow would not be possible for somebody like me or the average person. So I'm less than average person. I was starting out, right? Or the average person without this. So there is no plan B for me. I don't have that. And so that helps me. And I understand that other people do, right? And so it's, it's easier for them to kind of waver a little bit because they know they've got this on this side so the way that I look at it 
And the way that I'm going to suggest for you to look at it is pretend like there's nothing else. If it's something that you really want, understand that you don't want to burn yourself out. So my suggestion is bite off little chunks, little chunks that you can buy every day and that you're going to be okay with biting forever, right? So if you said today, I want to lose so much weight, right? Okay, don't plan on losing it in a week, right? Set it out and bite little chunks. Maybe you want to be a makeup pro. Okay, practice a little bit every day, right? Or maybe a little bit every week, whatever, but bite those chunks until you've ate the whole pie and you've accomplished that goal. Don't be eating from Susie's pie, Sally's pie, and Uncle Jim's big cobbler over there and your pie, right? Take little bites of yours one day at a time consistently, the same pie until it's gone. And once you reach reach that goal then and it's a bigger goal right because losing weight is hard I don't know why I'm on that whatever but losing weight is hard and it's a lifestyle commitment it shouldn't be something that you have to absolutely force just like working your business if you have a home-based business you have a traditional business it should not be something that you absolutely have to force I can't imagine having to force myself out of a bed to go to a job that I absolutely hate and do you know how many people on my team or that are just in general in this profession that absolutely that was their reality waking up hating every single morning because they didn't want to go somewhere I would absolutely uh, that would hurt me so I do what I like to do and something that I can sustain I don't try to hey Tanya Tanya sorry um, I don't try to impress other people with my goals I make them for me. I don't make my goals for you or for anybody else. So whatever your goal is, make it for you. Make sure that it's for you and make sure it's something that you can stick to, that you're going to stick to and be okay with sticking to. Because if you do the things every day, no matter what kind of goal you have, if you do a little every day, that's going to add up some big, big stuff. But if you do something this week, nothing next week, guess what? You're going to have built to build so much momentum before you ever get off the ground do you know that an airplane right getting off the ground it takes a hundred percent not 50 not 25 not 35 100 but once you get it off the ground it feels almost easy doesn't it like it's almost just like well, here we are. We're definitely not giving it 100 anymore, but we're still going, right? So when you're getting off the ground, it's going to take you getting some momentum to see those results. It's going to take you doing it every single day, every day, right? Every single day until you get off the ground. And then that means, all that means is it's a habit. And if you enjoy doing whatever that is, right? For me, it's making other women feel beautiful. It's helping other women make money. It's helping other women pay off debt. It's helping them deal with their anxiety and depression in a way that's healthy for them and that they get to share with other people. That's, that's fun for me. It's getting to go on girls trips or meeting people like Lisa and Jan and all these wonderful people because that's what I get to do because I choose to. So whatever your job is or whatever your goal is, if you want something, go for that. Don't look for approval in your spouse. Don't look for approval in your neighbor, right? Like I said the other day, as long as you, if it's, if it's your spouse, understand that if you're in the same book, right, and you have the same vision for the long run, the fact is, it doesn't matter if you're on the same page or even in the same chapter, as long as you're in the same book with the same ending in mind, okay? So, that's, that's the biggest deal. Other than that, there's really no person that you should allow stop you. Because if that was the case, I, I would not be here. I would not be here. Do you know how many people look me dead in my face? Can you imagine? Can you imagine somebody looking you in your eyes and telling you, Michelle, you will never amount to anything. You are nothing but a piece of trash and that's all you'll ever be. You're just like this person. You're just like that person in your family. You're no better than them. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. In my face, not behind my back, and I know lots of them done that too, but right to my face, like I wasn't even human. Like I didn't feel anything. And you know, I tried my best not to feel it. But I believed it. 
I believed it because just like a little kid, you tell a little kid something over and over and over and over again, eventually they're going to believe that, right? They're going to believe it as gospel truth. Even if they know the color blue, they see the sky is blue. If I go tell Jace that the sky is red for a long enough time, he's going to swear to God it's red because I've told it to him enough times, right? So you've got to stay, you've got to only allow you to make that choice. You don't let anybody else choose it for you because the only thing um, we were talking about, um, some of my team went to a team event while I was in Orlando. They went to Nashville. And a quote that was said was, the only thing worse than hell is getting to the end of your life and seeing the person, envisioning the person that you wish you would have became. And that hits really, really really hard for me and so when other people tell you it's impossible or it's dumb or um you can't do that like there's no way you can do that or nobody's gonna like that we don't care what they like okay our impossible is totally possible if we see it if it's part of our vision there's nothing that's gonna stop you and i was talking today to somebody who's also was in the shape that I was in before, and he's doing really, really good now. And he called me on the phone, and we were talking, and we were like, you know, he was telling me, he's like, do you know how many times that I was told that I'd never had, so he had it all, and he lost it, right? And now he's doing good, and he's saving money and all these things. But anyway, so we were talking, he's like, do you know how many times people told me that I'd never have all of it back, that I just lost my life and that I would die the way that I am. And I'm like, I've been told the same exact thing. He's like, but what they don't realize is if somebody like us, which is addicts, I was an IV user, so was he, right? He said, somebody like us who has to put all their focus on something like that, at the end of the day, you're going to have it no matter what. You give 100% to get it. It's not the right thing to focus on, but we want it, and we give 100% to get it at the time. And that is true. He's like, all we have to do is shift our focus on something else, and we immediately give it 100% because that's what we're used to giving. Because we've been doing it. We were doing it. We were doing it. We were doing it every day, 100%. And I never really thought of it that way. But that serves me because it's true. I give it 100% because I don't know how to not. There are days that I choose to have a lower production day by choice. I have to make myself but it's only because I choose that, not because I have to, not because I want to, whatever, it's my choice. Maybe I want to have a day with the kids and not do very much, maybe just a video that day or something. But I get to choose that. I don't let anybody choose it for me anymore. Nobody dictates this for me, and nobody dictates it for you, whatever your goal is. So I want you to write down like a 10-year goal. Okay, write down a 10 year goal and I want you to envision yourself in 10 years. Okay, I got this from Rachel Hollis's book and kind of put some more stuff on it. So write yourself, write down in 10 years, what will you be? Who will you be? What will that person do? Will you be like an extraordinary mom, an extraordinary grandma? I'm not telling you good, I'm not telling you great. I'm saying extraordinary, um, exceptional, awesome. Use words that stick out, not some played out words. You want words that are going to stand out to you, so find that word. If you use the word amaze balls, use it, right? Okay, so maybe you're going to be, um, maybe, maybe you're somebody who's going to be. In 10 years, you want to be, like, throughout the 10 years, you want that person that's very successful, that's hit that goal, that big goal that they had. Maybe you're somebody that wanted to run a marathon. Maybe you're doing that. Maybe you're running your fastest mile you've ever ran. Maybe you've lost the most weight that you ever have. And maybe you are... Uh, maybe you're financially free, which just means that you can do what you want without worrying and you have no debt. Maybe... Um, Maybe you want to be, 
an exceptional cook. Maybe you want to be strong in your faith. Maybe you want to be somebody who goes to church every Sunday and every Wednesday. Like the person that gets this goal that you have, whatever it is, find out what it is. Your one big goal that you're going to focus on, find out what it is, write it down, and figure out the person that you need to be in like the person that you see of yourself that's done that what are they doing with their life how do they live their everyday life are they making time for their their goal their business their whatever it is are they not keeping a schedule are they flipping and flopping or are they dead set on it are they focused are they doing what they want to do are they happy what are they are they listening to personal development every day what are they doing and when you write those things down or how are they dressing right what kind of car are they driving what kind of house are they living in right write all these things down and the things that you can do now right so maybe you're not very organized but you think that that person will be well you need to get organized right now Okay, if you think that that person's going to be strong in their faith, if that's something that they believe in, right, then you need to start working on that right now. If you think that that person is going to always keep appointments, never break promises, set up these things, whatever, and follow through, then you need to do that right now. Okay, you have to become the person that can achieve these goals or this big goal, if you will. If you want it bad enough, because that's how you make those impossible, big, scary things. And whether your thing is scary and big to anybody else but you is irrelevant, okay? My goals are terrifying to me. My little bitty goals were terrifying, little bitty to me now, but at the beginning of this, it was terrifying to me. Now I feel like that was small compared to now, but that version of me could only do the small things, and that was a big to me, and it didn't matter if it's big to anybody else but me, right? And then when I got accomplished that, then I could set something else, but I had to become the person that could even do the small things that were big to me, right? Before I could become the person who could do anything any bigger to me. So don't let somebody tell you what big is. Don't let somebody tell you what's right what's not right, what's okay, what's not okay. Don't let your alternate ego talk you out of it. When I mean by that, it's that weird voice that tells you all these bad things about how dumb that sounded when you said that or how blah, blah, blah that sounded when so-and-so said that or gosh, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. You don't fit in with any of these girls. Why are you going to conference? And the moment you walk in, you're loved and you know you fit in. But in your mind, that piece of you that wants to sabotage you, name that. Name that. Rachel says to name that. And for me, I've told you guys before that that person for me is Michelle Parrish and that I'm Michelle Eldridge. Let me introduce myself, right? Because Michelle Parrish is dead, been dead. And like, that's how I feel. But she sometimes tries to come in my head and I'm like, get back, get back, get back. Shut up. So tell that inner voice, name them. Name them. See what they look like. In my mind, I see myself with dirty hair, dirty clothes, just white, pale skin, dark eyes, dark circles, just almost anorexic looking like, and not anorexic. Like, I didn't have a disease except when I was inflicting on myself. And so, that's the person I see whispering in my ear, telling me I can't, or you shouldn't because, or you're dumb, or they're not going to care what you say on a live video. And I tell her, shut up, you're dead. Like, you've been dead, right? Like Michaela, a girl on my team, her, hers is named Michaela. Uh, it's Veronica, right? Another girl actually is, has the same name, Veronica Page. And Paige's name is Veronica as well is what I meant to say. But we tell them to shut up and we move on. You have to tell them to shut up. If you really have this goal and it's something that you want that seems impossible to you, maybe right now it does. Because if you'd ask me September 2017, will you be speaking on a stage ever? I would say no. 
If you'd ask me if I was going to do it twice, I would for sure say no. If you would ask me if the first ever makeup conference I went to, I would be recognized on stage, I would say no. If you would have asked me if I was going to earn a Cancun trip, I would say no. Like, where are you coming up with these lies? Are you just trying to make me feel bad because I'm never going to make it that far? That's what I would have said then. But I became the person who could accomplish those things because I enjoyed what I was doing. The more people telling me how beautiful they felt, the more people on my team telling me that this money paid for this or that their customers are saying this and they feel so good or they love sharing self-care tips to other people, the more I worked on me to be better for them so I could have more of them, right? And so that I could play big enough that nobody could really ignore me. They could like me or they could not, but either way was fine because I wasn't going to play small anymore. That I made an agreement with myself that it just wasn't going to happen. People can like me. People could not. I was going to move forward anyway, and not even him down there. He, there's nothing is going to stop me, right? It's just not going to happen, and it's because I choose to go for what I say. So the impossible is totally possible if you just go for it and shut out the background noise. You don't need all these other opinions. You don't need your own alter ego, bad devil self on this side that's screaming in your ear. You don't need any of that. All you need is to choose something that you're absolutely, truly, you know you want it and eat little pieces of your own pie every day. Don't chew out of 50 pies, like I said. No getting in no cobbler. Eat the one pie. Because as women, a lot of times, and thank you for sharing, um, I feel like we think we've got to do it all because a lot of people say they do it all. And you know what? I have done it all. It's almost dumb. But I, that when I'm going to come to a point where I don't have to do it all and I can hire things out, and that's what I want. Right now, I, I'm, I'm not ready for that yet. This Michelle is not ready for it yet. But I will be, and I will ask for that help. So if you are in a place and you're like, I don't know how she's getting all this done, da 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 maybe you need to ask for help. Maybe you need somebody to watch your kids one time a week. Maybe you need somebody to come sit at your house while you work for an hour. If that's some, or work out for an hour if you want to lose weight, whatever. Or maybe you need to take a cooking class if you want to eat and have somebody help you watch your kids or your dog or whatever. Something, anything. It's okay to ask for help. We as women because people act like it's such a horrible thing to ask for help anymore. And it's not. All these celebrities, all these people have got help, you guys. They did not do it on their own. They hired it out because they realized that time was the only true thing that they could not, the only commodity that they could not get back. And they wanted their goal so bad that they made it happen any way that they could possibly do it. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for all of you. Whatever your goal is, that's what I want for you. So what's your impossible thing? If you're uncomfortable, if you're comfortable sharing, tell us what your possible thing, your impossible thing is. Impossible, remember? And if not, you can message it to me if you would like. I'd love to see what everybody's is because it's easy to know that we're not alone. And even when our thing is small to us, or small to anybody but us, it's still a big deal. And I want you to know that it's valid. And it's okay to want something else, even if nobody else cares about it but you. Go for that. You're only going to live one time, man. Whatever it is, go for it. Don't be that person that's looking back on your life and asking yourself, why didn't I just take the chance? Why didn't I just ask? Why didn't I just do it? It's just 15 minutes a day workout. It's just cooking once a day, twice a day. It's not that hard, but that little person, right? Or those opinions, we got to kick them out. We got to kick them out. Okay, you guys. So I am going, oh, by the way, sorry. I had a bunch of you asking um, if the event was about the makeup too. Um, it is not. It's only about the artist program. So if you're in Canada and want to hear about pre-launch before pre-launch starts or if you're in the U.S. and you want to know about the artist program we're having an event with tons and tons and tons and tons of giveaways lots of us are going to be alive or 
Lots of us are going to be going live and we're going to be having fun. You're going to get an inside look on how we interact, how we do. Not just hearsay that we're awesome. You're actually going to get to see and feel the vibes from everybody. And energy is everything. You'll get to feel that for yourself. If you want an invite, the only way you can get one is if you message me and say, invite me. Or comment, invite me below. And I will get you an invite. Anyway, you guys, thank you guys. If you share this, make sure you comment shared. I appreciate you so very, 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 very much. I love you guys. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.